Hey everybody, it's Emily, the Crazy Worm Lady. Today I'm here with another update on our worm bin um, basic series. This is our cocoon bin. And I wanted to take a peek in here. So I'm gonna pop this lid off. Try not to bang my camera. I'm very good at doing that. Whoa, I was not expecting that. Since we did not feed anything last week, I would not have expected any sort of mold. But that is a very healthy amount of mold. So, I hope that doesn't indicate any problems, but we will soon find out. So, this is down where we uh, had our, our cocoons and our banana peels originally. So, I want to definitely kind of zoom in down here and take a look. See what we have worm-wise, and oh my goodness very first handful. This guy's more than a newborn. It's pretty good size. Well, that's encouraging because I was initially quite concerned about that mold, but it's probably just additional microbial life building up in here, and we can easily smother that out, and it won't be at all problematic. Oh, do you, hold on, let's see here. There's a little wisp, or two, actually, down here climbing the walls. I wonder what type of material is down here that they are liking. There's another baby, or two. There's actually quite a few here, it looks like. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Kind of takes a little while for them to start hatching, but once they do, they usually do all at the same time for the most part. And um, it's just really fun to see and to watch them kind of all grow together. So we saw that one big guy and we've seen a number of smaller worms. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of cocoons. So I'm wondering if most of them have hatched. I just don't know where the worms are or if we still have some time for some of them. It's kind of hard to say. But since I'm seeing wisps, even wisps that are climbing the walls, it's telling me that um, things are taking off. We definitely can get this bin fed up today. No problem. It'll be completely safe since we have worms in here that will be able to eat on it. Oh, there's another. That's a cocoon, but looks hollow. I'm going to see if I can zoom in if it'll focus. I think this one already hatched because you can see my finger straight through it. Um, but the worms will safely be able to move through everything. And what we can do is um, flip over that box where the, the mold is just to make sure that the mold isn't kind of sporing out into the air. But this is the very bottom of the bin, this cardboard piece here. And I always like to check the bottom, make sure there's no standing liquid. And there isn't. But the cardboard is nice and damp, just the way the worms like it. Although I don't see any climbing in the flutes. Usually they really like the flutes of, of cardboard, but there don't seem to be any in here. But I'm going to dig around a little bit more kind of see what the conditions are like in here, especially because of that mold. I just want to be careful, make sure we're still seeing a healthy bin, but I will say there's absolutely no smell. It actually smells rather earthy. The mold doesn't even have an odor. It's fine. Um, but that was a surprise when I first opened this bin. I did not anticipate that. But that's kind of how you just read the signs of your bin, and your bin will let you know if something is off and the worms will let you know as well by their behavior in the bin. So if I see anything else exciting, I will bring you guys back. Otherwise I'm going to get something together and we will feed up these wisps and see if we can get kind of a, a, a group of them next week all on one spot.
as I'm looking throughout the bin, the side of the bin where we had no food and was it's away from where the cocoons were also have some wisps on the side, which is just interesting. So it seems like they're kind of exploring the bin, which could be because they're hungry, but I am seeing a lot more and they're actually all spread throughout the bin. So it looks like they're kind of working their way in and kind of acclimating themselves to this bin. I wish I would have been checking this other side before. I just didn't assume they would come over here right away since the banana was on the other side, but they're definitely throughout this material. Another one here, one there. There might even be more on this side than there were on the other side. So I'm definitely gonna feed them up today. We're gonna feed right in the middle to try to get all the worms kind of congregate in one place. So I'm gonna pull some of this cardboard up, kind of let things get mixed up a little bit now, because we're gonna be hoping that the worms were just will just hang out around the food source and we're not gonna be hunting quite so hard looking for, for the wisps because we know they're in here and they're gonna find their way to the food source. Okay guys, so I just have some cucumber ends that I'm gonna put in here and I added a little bit of dry cardboard right here in the middle. It's a little bit of my dry mix, but really it could just be something like crushed eggshell or oyster shell, just something, it's a little bit of a pH buffer and a grit source for the worms. And I did actually add a tiny bit of water in with these cucumber slices because the bin is a good moisture, but adding that dry paper, I just wanted to make sure that it gets, gets and stays nice and moist so that the wisps can move into that. And that's why I put the skin side down Hopefully then it will decompose a bit faster and the worms will work in from the sides and the bottom uh, to work in here. And I'm just going to, we'll lay our burlap right there across where we're feeding. And I'm gonna just loosely lay some of these cardboard pieces that I pulled up from the bottom. I'm gonna lay these across the top because what I wanna do is I wanna take this flat rate box that has some of that mold on it and I want to actually flip this upside down so that the mold is face down because the mold is a good food source for the worms, but it's not something that we want kind of to be breathing in and to be running rampant in our bins. So I just flipped all of that upside down now and we're relatively well covered back up. We'll give these wisps another week but before i leave today i wanted to talk a little bit about um the acidity in a worm bin and using buffer why it's important and why we might have it all wrong when i flip this newspaper up there are a good deal of little wisps just hanging out on the newspaper that I didn't imme immediately see before. So I might try to s push some of these guys around the edge just to make sure they find their way back down to the food, but encouraging nonetheless. Okay guys, so it was a great update today. I just wanted to talk a little bit about pH in a worm bin. So you hear a lot about acidic bins and People say, you know, you need to add tons of buffer, your bin could be acidic, and that's why your worms are trying to escape, or that's why you have an overabundance of pests in your bin. And I think some of the details have gotten lost along the way. So um, it was recently brought to my attention that the pH in a bin is not really the issue when it comes to acidity. It's actually a basic bin, a bin that has um, a really high pH, not a low pH that's dangerous. And that's because of something called the calciferous gland. So the calciferous gland is um, something that the worms have that it needs some calcium um, in order to work well, but it actually works as like an internal 
pH buffer that can raise the pH from um, an acidic food. So the worms basically, they eat something in that's acidic and when they produce their castings, it's actually, you know, more neutral. However, the calciferous gland cannot make something that's really basic um, neutral. So when we talk about an anaerobic bin or a bin that's acidic, really the problem that arises from an acidic bin is more that you could have a problem with an overabundance of those pests that you get. So um, the mites, the springtails, the potworms, all of those things tend to kind of show up in higher numbers if the bin is acidic. However, the problem that um, leads to protein poisoning or string of pearls is actually a basic bin. So basically, you know, you overfeed and the food starts to kind of ferment and, you know, lack oxygen in the bottom and that builds up ammonia. And worms, like I said, they can't bring the pH from ammonia, which is extremely basic, up to neutral. And so that basic bin that you have from uh, overfeeding actually is what causes string of pearls that can make your worms try to escape because those gases are toxic. And um, so basically string of pearls or protein poisoning, poisoning doesn't really have anything to do with protein or acidity. It actually has to do with ammonia. So I just thought I would bring that up. So, you know, a grit source is important. pH buffer can help um, kind of maintain your pests in your bin at a good level. Um, however, that's not usually the culprit when it comes to worms trying to escape or worms dying. So keep that in mind. I know I didn't even have a full grasp of how this worked until recently. So I thought I would pass it along to you. So um, keep in mind, again, that's a major problem you can have with overfeeding, which we all do from time to time, um, especially when we're just starting out. Um, and it's just yet another reason to maintain that balance by not overfeeding your worm bin, adding plenty of bedding. Um, some buffer is great, but the buffer is not going to fix um, a basic bin. The buffer is just going to help keep your pest numbers down because the bin will be more neutral. So something calcium based is important for the worms to be able to utilize their calciferous gland and for it to work appropriately. But an acidic bin is not the death of a bin. It's a basic bin most likely that will cause that problem for you. So I just thought I'd tell you a little bit since I didn't even know myself. So um, that's gonna be it for today. It was a great update. I'm happy we're having more and more hatching. Um, the mold was a little bit of a surprise, but again, mold isn't dangerous in your bin. You just keep an eye on it. But um, we'll come back next week. We'll probably feed again, depending on whether the worms worked through the um, cucumber ends that we put in there. But all in all, everything is going great. We'll talk about a new topic next week. So let me know what you think. Drop those comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up. Click my bell for notifications. Um, that will let you know anytime I upload a new video or if I'm going live so that you don't miss anything. I'll talk to you guys real soon and I hope you have an excellent day.